Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. In this video, I want to continue with making our first person mesh compatible with abilities. So what we need now is an ability task. Now this task, I'm gonna go ahead and create a directory inside of my ability system folder, which is in Lyra game and ability system. Just right click, add directory. And I want to call this ability tasks. And inside of here, I just want to right click and add an Unreal class. It's going to derive from U object. And I want to basically call this task exactly what it's going to do. So this is going to play a montage on a mesh and wait for an event to happen. So this task is going to play a montage on a mesh and wait for an event to happen. Now, if I search uh, ability ability task play montage we have this play montage and wait task here now this doesn't wait on an event to fire this just waits for the montage to play and then there's also the wait gameplay event so we look a little bit lower underneath this uh, play montage and wait task, there's also the ability task to wait gameplay event. Now, the task that we're writing is a combination of this task and this task together. So if you want more backstory on exactly what these tasks are doing, you can go ahead and search it inside the source code. This is not actually uh, inside of the, well, this is taking me to, no, actually it's not taking me to gas campaign. This is taking me to the engine source code to where uh, gameplay abilities plugin is actually located and that's how you can find out more about what we're actually doing here but basically in a, in a short like a short little spiel we are making this task compatible to, to take in any mesh because if we look at how this is working it is basically just playing the montage on uh the third person mesh because so we're just going to jump into this task and we need to derive this from you ability task so that we can get some of those functions that exist inside of the ability task. And uh, up top, the first thing we wanna do, and I'm also gonna do the same thing that I did in the last video, which is copy and paste code, because this is an in-depth uh, piece of code here. So the first thing we want is a uh, multicast delegate. This is actually the delegate that's gonna fire off of the node that we're gonna create here, and you'll see it in a minute. And this is called F play montage for mesh and wait for event delegate. And it's taken in or it's outputting uh, two parameters, F gameplay tag, that's called the event tag. And it's also passing out a F gameplay event data. And this is called event data. This could probably be a constant reference to this, but we're not gonna mess with it. This is how it's written in my project right now. So. Let's just continue. The next thing we need is a constructor. So I'm gonna say you play montage and wait on the event. And this actually needs to take in a const f object initializer and it's gonna be object initializer. Next we need to override some of the functions inside of this class. So I'm gonna put this in a public section. Then I'm gonna come down here and we need to override virtual void activate and to override virtual void external cancel. We need to override a virtual F string. And this is gonna get our debug string. And we also need to override virtual void destroy or the on destroy function here. And now we can go ahead and create our pins. So let's uh, copy this over here. So the first delegate pin that will fire is when the montage is completely finished you need to make a u property that's blueprint assignable and it needs to be of this type of uh, delegate that we declared up top and call it on completed then we want another pin and this is going to be when the montage blends out also we need one for when the montage is interrupted by another montage. We need one for when the montage is canceled by another ability. And I'm gonna expand this so that this, you know, that you guys can see a little bit better. And then finally, we need one for when the event is received from us triggering this montage. And we'll, we'll handle that um, 
event inside of the editor. So I'm gonna copy some comments that were also made in the gas documentation. And this just allows the node to have a lot of information about what everything does. You guys could visit the documentation page that I left in the last video. I'll probably leave a link to it in this video as well. But you guys can visit that gas shooter project and find this task and copy this if you will. You don't really need it. It's just good to have for yourself to kind of understand what we're doing. So this next thing is going to be pretty large, okay? So this is going to be the actual node that we're creating. So this is creating the asynchronous node inside of Unreal for us. And we actually want to use the name of our class instead of this name that I'm using in my other project. So it's a static you play montage on mesh and wait event pointer. And it's called play montage for mesh and wait for event. And this is going to be the actual name of the node that we are able to, to instantiate inside of the gameplay ability. And this takes in uh, a gameplay ability pointer, a task instance name. This task instance name, as you see here, is set to override the name of this task for later querying. So you can also reach further down into your code inside of the gameplay ability and see which tasks are running. And the way you do that is by name. So you can give this task a name and you can say, OK, if this task is running, cancel it, basically. And this uh, saves you from having to actually cache this as a, a variable inside of the gameplay ability. And that also saves on memory. It takes in a use skeletal mesh because we want this to be mesh dependent. It takes in a U uh, and a montage pointer. And this is the montage that we want the mesh to play. It takes in a gameplay tag container. And this is the tags that we want this task to listen to. If any of these event tags are fired, our on event received delegate will fire, which is also a pin on the, on the node itself. Then we have this rate. Of course, that's how fast the montage will play. We have this start section. We can, uh, like, uh, like I said, it, it, it'll make more sense with some of these things in the editor because the start section, we can have a montage with multiple sections in it and we can tell this task to start at a certain section. This will be stopped when the ability ends, uh, which is defaulted to true. This is just, you know, we want to stop this montage once the ability ends. This float anim root motion translation scale up here says to change to modify the size of the root motion or set to zero to block it entirely. So this allows us to take a, um, a montage with root motion and kind of cancel the root motion if we want to or kind of minimize the effect of the root motion if we want to. So this be replicate montage, this is, should we replicate this to other clients? What it says here, that is pretty straightforward. Uh, for first person, this will always be false, but it's defaulted to true for this node because this node is kind of, it can be used for first person or third person. So it's defaulted to true and then you turn it off when you don't need it. Uh, override blend out time for cancel ability. This is exactly what it is. Uh, if we want the blend out time for the when the ability is canceled to be different, we'll put a value here. If it's negative one, it'll just ignore it. And the same thing for when the ability ends. Uh, we put a value here. It'll take that value as the blend out time. If not, it'll ignore it and use the blend out time that already exists on the actual montage. And then we need a few member variables. These are going to be private. So I'm going to create a private section here. And I'm going to just copy these and I'm going to explain why we're using them. So, so yeah, these look very similar to these uh, in inputs here. It's because we need to save locally in this object. You got to think that this task is an object that gets instantiated and it runs things for us. And remember, you objects can uh, replicate things for us if they have that setting. Uh, so we need to cache these variables so that we can use them in the functions. And what what happens is this, this uh, blueprint callable node will take in the data and then we'll cache it into the object so that we can use it in the different uh, functions that we overrode uh, up top. And, you know, of course, we got the mesh to, to cache this skeletal mesh. We have the montage to cache this montage. We have the event tags to cache the event tags. 
and so on and so forth. I'll let you guys pause and copy this. We need all of these different member variables here and make sure they're private because they don't need to be accessed outside of this node. Next, we need a couple of internal functions that are also private. So we need this uh, Boolean stop plan montage. So this checks if the ability is playing a montage and it stops that montage and then it returns true if the montage is stopped, false if it, if it did. Then we need the actual functions that we're going to bind our delegates to. So the first one is on montage blending out. This is what we're going to bind to the, let me go back up here so you guys can see. We're going to bind to this delegate here. We're going to bind our own blending out function here so that we have some internal logic. And then also you're going to have an execute pin inside of the, the gameplay ability that you can also run extra logic on. So that means we also need one for when the ability is canceled. We need one for when the ability has ended. And then we need one for when the gameplay event has been received. So I'll paste that. And then these delegates here are kind of the, um, the internal delegates that will it's almost like we need a handle to what these delegates are so that inside of the internal code we can unbind the delegates after they fire and to basically clean up this task after everything is completed there's one more function that i skipped over and it's called uh, get target ASC, it's returning a, a Lyra ability system component. We're going to forward declare this here because we don't want to include this in the header file. And let me close this. And now I just want to go ahead and alt insert and create definitions for everything on this uh, uh, header file here. And we'll have everything we need. I'll leave the formatting for this like this. It actually isn't bad because this is a lot of different intake and parameters here. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go down and follow the order of these things the way they're lined up here on the CPP file. The first thing we wanna do here is do the colon and we wanna call the super on the object initializer. I actually don't know what this, do, what this does. I've seen this quite a few times, but I really don't know the use of it. I have, I will have to Google that. If you guys want to Google it for me and like enlighten me, you know, jump, jump in the discord, send me a, send me a ping and like tag me in it so I can know what this does. Uh, but here we want to set our default rate. Thank you, virus threat detection. So we want to set our default rate equal to 1.0. This is just going to make sure that our, our animations play at the default of one. And then we want to set B stop when ability ends to true by default. And th these are our variables that are on the node. So these are our member variables, not the ones that will change this depending on what we set in the node in Unreal. Next, moving on to activate. First thing we want to do, before we even do the super, we want to run our code. So we want to check if the ability uh, uh, that's on our actual node here. We want to check if this ability, and this, if you see here, this is in the actual ability task. This is the member variable in the ability task. If this is equal to no point, we want to return because there's nothing to activate here. And having our custom code as well, we want to check if the mesh is equal to no point. Now, this is one that we created. If this is equal to null point, we want to send out an error and say that this mesh is invalid. Next, we want to go ahead and create a local variable for a toggle of whether or not the montage is played and set that equal to false by default. And we also want to go ahead and cache a reference to our ability system component by using our get target ASC function. And this hasn't been implemented yet, but that it's used to fill this variable out here. Then we're checking if we have a valid ASC. So if ASC, we want to line by line here, we want to go ahead and create a const pointer to this F gameplay ability actor info and set this equal to our abilities actor and current actor info because remember this gets set whenever the ability is granted to the, to the player. This data will get set with the avatar actor and a lot of other 
variables that we can use to do different things. Then we want to go ahead and grab our anim instance off of our mesh by calling get anim instance. So we'll create this pointer to an anim instance, which is a local variable, and we'll use mesh get anim instance. Then we want to check and see if that anim instance is equal to null pointer. And what I actually want to do here is return out early here. So if our anim instance is equal to null pointer, then we want to return out of this code here. If not, we'll continue on. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and bind our event handle. You see this event handle is this F delegate that we declare here. We'll, the, we'll bind this to a function by using the function. First, we need to include uh, our header file in our header file, the ability system, our ability system component header here so we can actually use this function. So this function is add gameplay event tag container delegate. Uh, this function takes in some event tags and then we give it a, a function or a U object with an address of a function that we want to fire when one of these event tags have, has been added to our ability system component. So we need to change this to, this needs to be our U play montage on mesh and wait for event because we're giving it the address of this class, and you can also use this class. This is also what I like to use in a lot of my newer code is this is a template or type def here, and this just gets the class that we're on. Instead of having to type out this every time, you can just type out this class, and then the colon or the scope operator, and then we give it the name of our function. And so this will bind this event handle to, to uh, whatever well, basically, we're setting this event handle to whatever delegate comes out of binding our function to uh, this gameplay event tag container. Next, we want to check a few things. We want to check if our ability system components function that we created in the last video, the play montage for mesh. We want to check if this, because this returns a Boolean, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this ret uh, actually returns a flow. Okay, so we want to see if this value is greater than zero because if we actually play the montage, this value will return a value greater than, this function will return a value greater than zero. But as you remember, this function has some parameters that we need to pass in. It needs the game playability and Rider's not working for me here. It needs the game playability, which is our ability which is a member variable. It needs a skeletal mesh component, which is our mesh. It needs the gameplay ability activation info, and we're going to get that from the ability. The ability has a reference to our activation info, so we can say get current activation info. This function also needs the montage to play as well as the play rate, so that's our rate. And it needs the section, the start section name. We can call that our start section, our spell. There it was. I see it. So we need our start section, and then we need to uh, decide whether we want to replicate this montage, and we'll set that to be replicate montage, and that should complete out our function. So if this value from this function returns a value greater than a zero. We'll continue on with our code. I'm going to copy this because this has a, a, a comment that might be useful. So playing a montage could potentially fire off a callback into game code, which could kill this ability early out if we're pending kill. So basically what this is saying is that depending on what we have set up in our montage, this could fire a callback before we get to anything that we need inside this code. So we want to go ahead and dip out of this function so that we don't crash the game because we're trying to access things that no longer exist because we actually killed this ability. Then we're going to set our cancel delegate that we have declared in our header file. We want to set this equal to ability on gameplay ability cancel. And we want to add a U object here. This is a, a way to bind to a, I think this is a, just an F delegate. Uh, it's a multicast delegate. Okay, so 
adding a U object is a way to bind to a F dev. There's also a few other ways if you want to look at the documentation for multicast delegates, you can just type in multicast delegates, Unreal, and you should get something here. This is probably good. I looked at it recently. You see here we got ways to bind to multicast delegates. We got add U object, add, add static, add raw. Depending on what your needs are, you can, you know, use whichever one of these bind and type functions as you wish. Uh, but definitely uh, check out the documentation for more information on that. The U object is going to be this object. And I kind of removed something there. So we need this object, and then we want to give it the address of this class. And we want to give it our on ability cancel function for the function there. And I forgot to put a comma in between these two parameters here. It's still giving me an error, but I think redundant qualifier. What is this error? Cannot apply operator. So maybe I do need to give it the name of the class. So let's give it the U play montage wait for event. Give it the scope operator. Uh, still giving me this issue here. Oh, I understand. I know why. It's because instead of just giving it the name of the function, we're giving it the function itself. So delete those two open parentheses and that should fix it. Next, we want to bind our blending out delegate. So we want to go ahead and bind the U object. And I believe this one is an F delegate. Is this a multicast? Yeah, this is just a delegate. So it has different binding methods. We want to pass it this class and then we want to pass it the address of this class and give it our on montage uh, blending out function here. And actually, I'm going to say this class here as well. Then in the anim instance, we add this delegate that we just kind of created to the delegates that will get fired whenever a montage is blended out. Uh, this this one's kind of hard to explain, but I, let me just type it out. So anim instance, and we want to say montage set blending out delegate to a reference of this blending out delegate and give it the montage to play. So basically what this does is it takes the montage that we pass in and it kind of adds this delegate to an array of delegates that will fire whenever this montage blends out. And You'd have to look deeper into the code to, to find the flow of these things. But basically, whenever the montage blends out, it calls a, a function that's very like used a lot inside of Unreal. It's called a, a broadcast or uh, I, I can't remember the name of the function. Hold on. It's, it's called execute if bound, I think is the name. So there's this execute if bound function that is used a lot and basically it executes all the delegates on something if delegates exist. Then we also want to do the same thing for our montage in the delegate. We want to bind U object, pass it this object, and then pass it the address of this class. And I think uh, Copilot was trying to help me out there, but we want to just give it the on montage ended function name. And then also go ahead and do the anim montage montage set in delegate. Give it the montage in the delegate that we just bound a U object to and the montage to play. Uh, you guys can see how helpful GitHub Copilot is. Uh, it, once you type something out, once it kind of realizes what you're trying to do. Next, we need a reference to a character. So I'm going to create an A character pointer, call this character. And we're going to cast to A character using our actor info, avatar actor dot git. This is going to get a because I believe this is a yet yeah, a weak object pointer, so this is going to get a actual pointer to that avatar actor. You can also use get avatar actor like this. There's also this way to get the avatar actor. Basically, this just wraps what we just did into a function. It returns the pointer. Then we want to do a couple of checks here. I'm gonna copy this one because this is actually a lie, and I just want to talk to it. We want to check if the character is valid. And then we also want to check that the character's role is equal to role authority so that make sure that we're only doing this on the server, standalone or listen server. Or we want to do this if the local role is equal to autonomous proxy because 
if we are a client controlling this, we also would want to have this set as well for us. And setting it on the server will set it for the client as well, but it's kind of like predictably setting this on the client. Um, but we only want to do that if we're the autonomous proxy and the net execution of the ability is set to local predicted because local predicted is basically saying we want to do this locally and then do it on the server as well. We'll go ahead and say character set anim root motion translation scale equal to the value that we have cached on our object here, this anim root motion translation scale parameter or variable. Then after this finishes, we want to go ahead and set be played montage equal to true. And then else out of this, if we want to basically tell our end user, whoever is uh, debugging this, that there's something wrong with this ability. So I'm going to copy this, this error message we want to, and this is actually passing in the wrong task. So I'm going to delete this here. So we just want to send out a log, make it log temp, make it warning and say that the play, play montage for mesh and wait for event called to play montage fail. Basically that we didn't execute the montage properly. And I'm actually doing this else on the wrong spot. We want to do this else if this value is not greater than zero. So we find that open curly brace enter and put that else underneath there. And then the else for if our ASC is valid is a little bit different. It actually sends out a log that our function name called on an invalid ability system component. So this lets us know that the problem was that the ability system component was invalid and that's where we should start looking. Next, we want to check if uh, the variable vplay montage is basically false and say, let me uh, make this somewhere that you guys can have access to everything. Okay. We want to put out a log temp log saying that our function name, call it an ability. And this parameter here is the name of the ability. And this failed to play the montage of this name. And the task instance name of this montage is this instance name dot to string here. And we also want to see if we should broadcast the ability task delegates. We want to call the on cancel broadcast delegate with an empty gameplay tag and an empty gameplay data. This will go ahead and fire that on cancel pin inside of our actual gameplay ability blueprint. And then we actually don't call the super here. We just want to call set waiting on avatar. Next, we have our external cancel function. This one is pretty straightforward. All we do is check that our ability system component is valid, and then we call on ability canceled, and then we also call the super. For our get debug string function, we actually don't want to call the super here. We want to do a couple of things. We want to go ahead and make a uh, local and a montage pointer here, call it plan montage, set it equal to no pointer by default. Then we want to check if the ability and the mesh are both valid. So in, inside of here, we'll go ahead and say that our anim instance is equal to uh, mesh.get anim instance. And this is just making a local variable that we can use. Right here, writer is telling me that I can make this const, same as this right here, I think. But since we fill this variable here, I don't think we can actually make this const. And right here, we check if our anim instance is not equal to null pointer. If it's not, we go ahead and set our playing montage equal to whether or not a montage is active and we pass it the montage to play from our uh, member variables. Uh, if that is true, this is one of those select style code lines here. This is the inline Boolean. I think I, I, I still didn't research what the exact name of this is. I use these a lot though. Um, but yeah, basically if our montage is active, we'll give it the montage to play. If it's not, will give it the uh, current active montage. So it'll get whatever the active montage is on our anim instance and pass that in as our plan montage. And then we'll return this f string print f. This lets us format a string as if we were doing it in a log. So we can say play montage and wait for event. And we'll give it the mon. We'll say the montage to play is equal to this get name safe here. And the currently playing is equal to 
get name safe playing montage. That just lets us know if our montage of play is equal to our currently playing montage. On destroy has a few lines, but I'll just copy and paste them and run over. So this note here, so clearing the montage and delegate isn't necessary since it's not a multicast and it will be cleared when the next montage plays. If we are destroyed, it will detect this and not do anything. This delegate, however, should be cleared as it is a multicast. So multicast delegates do need to be cleared. So we're checking if the ability is valid. We want to say ability on get game on game playability cancel dot remove and remove the canceled handle. And then we want to say if be in owner is finished, which is coming from the function. So if that's true and be stop when ability ends is true, we call stop playing montage. This is a function that I believe we have here that hasn't been implemented yet. We call stop playing montage and we give it our blend out time that we want when the ability ends. After all of that, we go ahead and make this uh, local variable to an ability system component using this get target ASC function. And then if that ability system component is valid, we remove the gameplay tag container delegate, which is that uh, delegate that we had put on there for when our gameplay events happen on our ability system component. So we just remove that. Then we call the super for on destroy. And moving on, this function is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, basically all this function does is take, takes these parameters and stores them locally for us. So instead of typing all this out, I just want to go ahead and grab this. So let me go ahead and include uh, this ability system globals.h. So this function is a helper function for applying global scaling for various ability system tasks. This isn't meant to be a shipping feature, but to help with debugging and iteration via a C bar, we can go ahead and say ability system .global ability scale and we basically can give it a value if we want. Then we want to change, I'm going to change the name of this because we want to make a pointer to this class here or this object, call it my object. And then we want to use this new ability task function here, pass it in the type of our class and give it the owning ability and the task instance name as the two parameters. And basically all we're doing is taking the variable that is on the object and setting it equal to the incoming variable from the blueprint node that we will be using inside the game playability. So basically just make sure you go through and set all of the member variables that we created equal to the ones on the incoming parameters from this function. And then at the end, we want to return this object. Moving on, we got a pretty long function, but it's only long because I copied the code from another place. I didn't actually write it myself. I just fixed what I needed to fix. So first thing we check is if our mesh is equal to null pointer, we want to return false. For me, this would be a null line, uh, like a one liner, so it'll remove a lot of these lines. Then we want to make a local variable for our ASC using that get target ASC function. If we don't have a valid one of these, we will return false. Next, we want to make this pointer to our ability actor info set equal to the current actor info on our ability. And if that's a null pointer, we'll return false as well. These are just early and out just in case anything got lost in memory or something happened a little early out so that we don't crash. Finally, we want to make a local anim instance and set it to the anim instance from our mesh. And if that's equal to null pointer, we'll go ahead and return false. And like it says here, this function or this if statement checks if the montage is still playing. And it also says here that the ability would have been interrupted, in which case we should automatically stop the montage. So if we have a valid ASC and a valid ability, we want to check if our ASC has an animating ability from any mesh. Remember, this is a function we wrote in the last video. This basically iterates over an array of cached uh, structs and checks and sees if any ability um, is animating and returns that ability. And we're seeing if the ability that returns from this function is equal to our ability and if get current mesh for montage and we pass in our mesh on this uh, ability is equal to the montage of play. If that's true, we want to unbind any delegates so that they don't get called. 
So we got this F and a montage instance pointer. This is a this is a struct. And this is a struct that you can look at the documentation. Rider has some really good tools to easily get to documentation. This lets you know everything, all the different functions that's on this F and a montage instance. Uh, this is just an instance of our montage, which will get by using anim instance, get active instance for montage, passing, passing in the montage to play. And if this is a valid pointer, we want to say montage instance on montage blending out started dot unbind. So this is unbind any delegates that we have previously set to this blending out started, and it will unbind any previous delegates that we set to this on montage ended delegate. After that, we'll go ahead and call ASC current stop, current montage stop for mesh. We'll give it the mesh and then we'll give it our blend out time. So this is another function that we wrote in the last video where we'll go ahead and tell our ASC to stop playing the montage for the mesh that we pass in and use this blend out time if we so deem it so. Then we'll go ahead and return true out of this function. Remember this function returns a Boolean or stop playing montage. If not, we'll return false. For our get target ASC function, this is uh, also straightforward here. It'll just return a cast to our uh, ULIR ability system component using the ability system component that is actually a member variable on our ability task, which is what this actual class derives from. Okay, just a few more functions here. If I copy and paste this over here for our on blending out function, this is the delegate that will go ahead and go. This function is bound to a delegate that will fire whenever this on uh, blending out started delegate fires. So we check if the ability is valid and the ability that cur get current montage is equal to our montage. And this montage of play is a local or, or a member variable. Then we want to check if the montage getting passed into this function is equal to the montage to play. Next, we say ability system component clear animated ability. So then we'll reset the anim root motion translation scale. First, we'll make a local variable to an, a character class by casting to uh, a character using our avatar actor. Then we're checking if that character is valid and the local role is equal to role the authority, as well as if we are locally predicting and we're the autonomous proxy. We'll go ahead and set the anim root motion translation scale back to one. If this montage was interrupted, which is a Boolean here, we'll say if we should broadcast these ability task delegates, we'll go ahead and call on interrupted dot broadcast, passing an empty F gameplay tag and an if, uh, empty F gameplay event data. Else, we'll go ahead and check that same should we broadcast ability task delegates function here, and we'll broadcast this on blend out with the empty F gameplay tag, also an F gameplay event data that's also empty. On ability cancel is pretty straightforward as well. So if this stop playing montage function returns true with our override blend out time for cancel ability passed in, we will let the blueprint handle the interrupt as well. So like I said, these delegates are basically the pins that will fire inside of the actual blueprint node that we're creating right now. So if we should broadcast this ability task delegates, we'll go ahead and broadcast the on cancel delegate using this empty F gameplay tag and this empty F gameplay event data. And then for our on montage ended, this was a little bit different. So if not being to, so if this montage was not interrupted, meaning that it, it just played all the way through and it's ended, what we'll do is check if we should broadcast these task delegates and then we'll call the on completed uh, pin and this will pass out an F gameplay tag that's empty and an F gameplay event data that's also empty. And then we'll call in task. This will stop the task because when, if the montage plays all the way through and it completes, basically the task won't fire any other delegates so we can go ahead and end that task finally this on gameplay event function that we bound to our ability system components i would go back up there uh, but i don't want to have to lose it but if you remember correctly we bound it up here in the activate where we bound this event handle to this add gameplay event tag container delegate we bound this function to this event handle here 
So whenever this function fires, the code that will run will be this. We'll check and see if we should broadcast the ability to task delegates. And then we'll make this uh, empty, or we'll make this temp data, this F gameplay event data, so that we can store it here. And we'll just dereference the pointer to this uh, constant payload here. And then we'll set the, take this temp data and set its event tag equal to the event tag on here. And then we'll go ahead and broadcast this event received delegate, passing out the event tag and the temp data. So with that, I want to, I want to compile this because we're getting to the point where we'll, we're going to start using this in the next video, but I want to compile this to show you how this looks inside of the editor to show you how this, all this code that we wrote translates to this blueprint node that we just created. So I'm going to hit debug here. Okay, so I got a couple of errors. I got this unresolved external symbol and basically it's telling me that some replicated props. This is basically telling me if you've seen this error and you don't know what it is, it's pretty much saying that there's a function that is being used, but it's not declared or defined. So we need to navigate to this ULIR ability system component. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that. Let me stop this search here and let's minimize Unreal completely. And then let's go to the ability system component, which is here. And what we need to do is make the function that doesn't exist, but is being used. So I believe it's in public. I'll put it down here. Uh, actually, I think it's protected. So let's call it virtual void. And I think the function is get lifetime. This is the one thing I do hate. I don't know why Unreal removed this function, but it's get lifetime replicated props. It outputs a T array of F lifetime properties, call this out lifetime props. And it's a constant override. We're going, to, we're going to go ahead and implement this. And the reason that this is happening is because we have a replicated, if we look for replicated, we have replicated using here. And let me see, do we have any more replicated functions? No, so we just have this replicated using here. And we have this replicated anim montage info for mesh. This variable is replicated, but we haven't actually quote unquote replicated it. So we need to go to that function right here. We'll call the super. And so we're going to say do rep lifetime. And then we're going to pass it this class. And we're going to give it the name of our replicated variable that we want to queue up Unreal to, to kind of track for replication. And now if we go ahead and run the debugger, we should be fine. Okay, with that being compiled successfully, let's navigate to that ability. So I'm gonna just press control P. I know it's GA underscore, I believe it's grenade. And here we have the third person grenade that we're using. And we're actually gonna duplicate this, but I just wanna show you guys what this node looks like. So if we look for play montage for mesh and wait for event, you see this, this task pops up for us now. And you can see all of the code that we wrote is this pretty much. So we got this on completed, on blended out, on interrupted, on canceled, event received, event tag, event data. This, this is all things that we set up inside of that UAbility task class that we just typed. So in the next video, we're going to actually put this to use and start creating our grenade ability. You guys, it's, it's finally there, baby. We finally gonna get some action going. So if you guys are ready for that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.